Hey everybody and welcome back to Moonlighter. Today I'm covering the Forest Dungeon and Shop Level 2. I've got to say that I really appreciate the support that I got on my first episode of Moonlighter. And also I've got to give a shout out to Weird Weasel who told me about the actual secret rooms. Completely had no idea about these and I had to look into how to spot the secret rooms. So starting off our tip section will be the dungeons. Every single dungeon has them and you can tell you are in a secret room right as you proceed into the next room. For just a few seconds somewhere in the depths you can see a twinkle. Just dive off the side and you found it. Now from what I've found so far there are four types of secret rooms. The first is just some minecarts which have a few items around them, it's not that special. The next is what I call a cursed item room, where an expensive item is on a pedestal and as soon as you take this item, a spirit emerges that you cannot kill. This spirit follows you from room to room as well. Now what you can do is return back to the floor and exploit the rest of the chest, or you can go ahead and take the cursed item and then use your pendant to leave. The best one in my opinion is the Horde Survival Room. Here you activate the stone and waves of enemies come out. Each time you defeat a wave you get to open chests starting at bronze. Once you beat the final wave you get to unlock the purple chest which is the best type of chest you can open second only to the ones a bosses guard. Another type of secret room has a stone chest inside of it where you can send all the items you've scavenged so far back to town. This one is great if your backpack's are already full. With the Force Dungeon comes enemies that have status effects. Most of these enemies, including the easy to kill jellies, now also have poison damage, so really just focus on dodging. The enemies also move a lot faster and even coat the ground with acid, so really pay attention to your environment as always. Now to get this far you obviously know what you're doing by getting armor and upgrading slash enchanting weapons. For armor you also need to balance out your stats. So the heavier the armor type, the more health and armor you get at the cost of speed. I personally take the Iron Helm, Steel Chest Piece, and Iron Boots. I don't feel like it slows me down too much and gives me some survivability. Also, I finally tried all the weapon types, and I can say the optimal weapon set is the Spear and the Bows. You could replace the Spears for the uh, big swords to attack in an arc, which is nice to kill enemies around corners. But I still prefer the Reach and the Charge Attack of the Spears. Also, something that I noticed with the Spears is that when you're charging forward, you become invulnerable. So however, this does not work for the Forest Guardian, so be careful. So the Forest Guardian is way harder than the Golem King, and without spoiling everything for the fight, go ahead and clear these small little plants that shoot these balls at you. They are tricky when combined with the certain attacks of the boss. So finally transitioning over to the shop, there is so much more you can do once you upgrade to shop level 2. You'll have thieves start showing up more and more, plus you can also decorate your shops with items you receive from the Hawker. I just try to get as much into getting customer tips as I can, and I believe by the time I finished the forest dungeon I was getting around 40% in tips from transactions. There are also other items that cut the rate down that thieves run in or even allow more customers in the Moonlighter. You'll also have a lot more tables to cover, so to make it a little easier to catch thieves we will briefly go over item placement. Really all you have to do is keep your expensive items closer to you with the cheaper items closer to the door. You can even understand when thieves are about to nab something just because the game seems to make it really obvious. So this one's a little bit more of a fun one, but go around Renoka and hit some trees. They will drop gold and you'll get a fun little achievement. So while you're farming jellies in the forest dungeon, you can take these back to Eris of the Wooden Hat to brew some potions. The Firefly Potion is especially useful for finding the next floor of the dungeon, or you could use this to find the boss if you feel ready enough. The Map Potions help if you need to go back to the Golem dungeon to grab components to build armor or weapons that you haven't used yet. You also have Le Retaleur by now, and eventually you will buy items from him usually when you are trying to craft something and don't have the last few components. But as obvious as it sounds, do not buy every ingredient from him since if you are trying to sell armor or weapons, you are going to severely harm your total profit. For the last tip, make sure to upgrade your chest to at least the second level before proceeding onward to the desert dungeon. If you overfill them, you won't be able to use some of the special condition items in the dungeons. Well that's all I've got for this video, I'd like to also say that I'm starting to see more of the lore about the dungeons in the item description. So go ahead and read the forest history and tell me what you think about that. Again, I thank you so much for watching this far, it really means a lot to me. If you enjoy the video, give it a like and subscribe to see more of Moonlighter.